Hello, Silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for Silver Education, Acquisition, and Entertainment. And hey, if you enjoy American history and coin collecting, this is the video for you. I've shown up just a little bit early for my monthly coin club meeting, and I'll be talking to Russ, the numismatist. T. So, hey, I'm normally uh, used to saying, hey, thanks for having me at your shop, but we're not at your shop today. Uh, we're here at our uh, monthly coin club meeting, and uh, so we're here early uh, as uh, we speak. Maybe some noise will pick up in the background, but for now, well, we've got a quiet room. Uh, thanks for bringing some stuff uh, to show my viewers. What do you got there, man? Yeah, absolutely. So, we did a really, really cool deal um, back in January. It was kind of a what I would call a virgin collection. So it's a collection that really hasn't been touched for a very, very long time, and almost nothing was slabbed. Um, and a, a small chunk, but a very cool chunk, um, was a lot of colonial stuff. Um, and there's a couple pieces in here that are really, really neat. Um, I've been, we just got these back from PCGS um, just two days ago at this point now. Um, so, I've been do, having to do a lot of research to kind of figure out what we're going to do with some things um, and going through that process. And one of them that is really cool is, um, so there's a 1795 half cent that came in. Um, it's a gorgeous piece. It grades a VG8. Um, mm -hmm. It's a plain edge, no pole variety, um, which is a whole, whole thing for the early copper guys. But what's really neat about this is it was struck on a different coin. So the early U.S. Mint had a really hard time getting a hold of enough planchets and blanks to produce coins. Do you have an idea of what time frame that was? Yeah, so this is, this is 1795, okay. um, and, and the Mint had had this issue really since they, they began in, in 1792. 1792. Yeah, they, okay. they were always having a hard time getting, um, getting raw material and getting you know manufactured material, and a big part of that piece is because a lot of that stuff came from the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom at this point is still the leading manufacturer of really everything. They're leading the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. um, and they're you know at the forefront of minting technology. And so the, the nascent U.S. government have, is having a hard time producing coins. So they had to get creative. So one of the ways they did that is they would take other things and they would reuse them. So for instance, um, for, for some of them, they would take uh, large set planchets that were, um, were for whatever reason, you know, they, they struck coins on them, they struck large cents, and they didn't come out right. They could have been broad struck, they could have been triple struck, they could have just been, they could have just been really bad. Um, but what they would do is they would shave them down, mm -hmm. and then they would just strike over them to make half cents or even no um, large cents. But... Basically recycling. Completely recycling. There was nothing that went unused because, you know, as a country, we're in the 1790s, we're very, very young, and we just don't have the resource to do that. Mm -hmm. What's really cool about this piece, though, is that it came with the example, basically, of what it was struck over. And that is a Talbot Alleman Lee token. These were struck in the United Kingdom for a company, a firm called Talbot Alum and Lee, that did uh, business in British India, and they were like an importer-exporter kind of a thing. Um, and they struck these tokens that were almost the exact same size as a, size as a large cent. Um, and so they were used to, they circulated in the, in the early United States as cents, because you couldn't get that coinage. You know, the mint is, is struggling to produce that coinage. So what they did is they bought um, pretty much the figures are anywhere from 100,000 to 110,000 of these large size cent size tokens. Okay. And they then used them to strike large cents and half cents. Huh. So. And so this company that they uh, bought them from was a private firm? Yes, private okay. firm. Um, this was a very, very common thing for companies to do. Mm -hmm. um, they would strike tokens that would then be able to be used as small change. Okay. Um, you know, other merchants would readily accept it because, you know, at this time, what's really important is what the material is being used. Ah. 
Um, so the this is copper. Value it's of the, the metal. Exactly. It's the intrinsic value. Okay. So, you know, these these circulated widely as cents, mm -hmm. but the U.S. government looks at it and decides, hey, we can use those. They're already in the shape that we need. Uh huh. We just have to either roll them out or strike over them. And so, um, for this particular example, this is this 1795 no pole half cent is struck over a 1794 Talbot Alleman Lee token. Huh. And what's really really neat about this is we can actually see the design of the Talbot Allen and Lee token under the design of the half cent. Right, now I'm dying to see it. <laughs> So uh, I'll get some high resolution pictures for you, okay, cool. um, obviously, so we can show everybody. <laughs> but if you look at this guy, um, in at the twelve o'clock position, roughly on the reverse, you'll see what looks almost like damage. What it really is was this raw when you acquired it? Yes, this okay. completely raw. When we got it. it; had never been in a holder. Um, so the design of the Talbot Alum and Lee token has a a three masted sailing ship on it. And um, it, it's hard to see kind of just with the naked eye, especially on a camera, you know, mm -hmm. like, like we're doing right now. But once you get these high resolution pictures that I'll be able to upload oh, yeah. for you guys, you'll be able to see it. Definitely. Um, People appreciate but you can actually see a piece, you can actually see part of the rigging um, that it was struck over. And what's even cooler is um, the... So this is the original. That's the original. And if, you, if you'll draw your attention, it says Liberty and Commerce. Mm-hmm. Um, you can actually see the two M's in commerce on the obverse of this coin, on the edge, from when they, you know, when they when they struck over it. They cut these down to make them that size. So it's a really really neat piece of not only you know numismatically is it really interesting. It's really interesting from a purely historical standpoint and where we are as a young country and how we're able to not meet those needs of our commerce and how we have to turn to these, you know, maybe not so savory methods, um, you know, but at the same time, it's really <coughs> American ingenuity at its finest. Yeah. yeah. So these Doing are really, really cool pieces. what you have to do at the time to make it work, huh? Exactly, exactly. Um, so these are really cool pieces, um, and they, they made a couple different pieces. Um, so this is... This is the 1794 token, okay. but they also did a 1795 token, mm -hmm. and this deal came with a 1795 token, and this one uh, is an absolute blazing example. It's an MS-63 Brown, um, and really, I think it probably should have gotten closer to Red Brown. Um, the design is slightly different. Um, it has a different legend. It has different size letters, so that's how we're able to ascertain that this half cent was struck on a 1794 as opposed to that a 1795. Huh. Did it make sense? I could have swore the other one I saw when you flipped it on the reverse you had to turn it. Uh, yeah, so, the original? Yeah, yeah, so that's the 1794. Yeah, and so um, you know we're really one of the only countries actually that does what we call a coin alignment Okay. Or a coin turn, which is where you would have to flip the coin over to be on the you know on the right side for it to be right side up. Okay. Um, what that is called is metal alignment, okay. um, where it's you know you turn it and whichever way you turn it, it's right side up. Uh -huh. um, and in especially like the early U.S. Mint and you know early coinage production, it, they really didn't have as high a tolerance as they really didn't care as much. Yeah, it changed from 1794 to 1795. Yeah, and honestly, it probably changed in in batches. Oh, um, you know, okay. the the dies move as really? they're set. Okay. Um, and so unless you're really unless you really care about that quality control, uh -huh. a lot of times, um, especially you'll see it on a lot of early U.S. stuff, is you'll you'll find them with different degrees of turns because they just didn't care. Because all they were trying to do is spit them out in tolerance and as fast as they could. So if the design was a little funky, uh -huh. that's okay. As long as it weighed right, uh -huh. who cares? You see how I noticed that? You're going to make me into a, new, a numismatist. That's what I'm trying to do. That, that's <laughs> little the goal. Little by little, you're teaching me and you're teaching my audience as well. So thanks for the history lesson, man. My pleasure. I can't wait to plug in those good pictures and maybe yeah. even some other historic uh, pictures that I find. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll, do, uh, we'll do it right, and I think the viewers will enjoy it. So thanks for the time, man. Yeah, of course. <laughs>
Hey guys, just a shout out and a special thank you to all of my channel members and a special welcome to my newest channel member, Sabrina. Hey, these guys support me in my efforts to bring you all of these videos. And another way that you can support me is hitting that thumbs up, that like button. If you're new here, subscribe. And are you wondering, why is he showing us raffle tickets? Well, look what I won, an American Silver Eagle. Uh, you see, my coin club does a raffle to support the club, and hey, my 10 bucks turned into an American Silver Eagle. I haven't acquired one of these in a long time. But this one is slightly mysterious. Uh, it's in a grading company that I'm not real familiar with, but take a look at this. It said it was verified in October of 2000 by the Mint, and but the coin is a 2001. And I was a little curious about that. In case anybody knows, please let me know in the comment section. And my coin club is having a coin show September 3rd over at St. Matthias Church in Crown Point. Uh, the details, as you could see, are on this flyer. And uh, hey, I've attended this one lots of times, and it's an excellent show. Hope to see you there.